the office. Mute your mic, Craig. Sorry. That's me. Your camera's not on. Good evening, everyone. Ethne was here, but she disappeared, so she'll probably pop back on. Hello, woman. Hello, everybody. Hello, man. Met you. Ask me, your camera's not. There we go. Cynthia, I don't know if you saw my note or not, but. I sent you a draft in the Dropbox of the Okinawan video, but I need the uh, some details on the genealogy from each one of those different villages. I, I want to put that at the end of it, so we, we can talk about it later sometime. Okay. All right, everybody, come to attention. Now we got everybody here. Respect. All right, so let's start with the announcements. Um, I just had Kelly check the weather. It's supposed to rain Friday. It's supposed to be warm enough for class Saturday, but we're going to have to wait and see how much rain we get Friday. Um, and Sunday, it looks like it should dry out on Saturday. Sunday, it'll be a little cool, 55 degrees is the high. So I think we'll be able to have class on Sunday. We'll have to see about Saturday. It depends on how much it rains between now and then. So my microphone's work in correct order. Yes, sir. It's yeah. fine. All right. Madeline, it's your turn. You're here. Let's do the punches. Sir. Punches. Ready? Set. Go. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hut! Double punches. Ready, set. Go. One. That's it. Keep it a little quicker. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Punches. Ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. 
Okay, leave Sam Hita. Turn on Sam Hita's mic for me, Don. Okay, let's start with the question. Don't start yet. Marjorie, I know your knees hurting you, so don't do these things. You're going to work on a lot of stuff. So, so I don't want you to hurt your leg. All right, Sam Hita. Question kick. Uh, I couldn't hear you. Question. Okay, question. Well, let's pick our right leg first. We should be in a left front stance. One. Two. Three. Four. Six, seven, eight, nine, put, put. switch legs, face high up to get the kick up. We should be kicking with our left leg now, right. Uh, yeah, left leg, sorry. One. Matthew, you're supposed to be kicking. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Okay, thank you. So when uh, her microphone was open, she couldn't hear me very good, but Warner said before he could hear me, so that's the case, right, Warner? Yes. Yes, sir. It was it was a Feedback is what it was. You were talking and it was bouncing back across the other microphone. That's right. Okay. So we work on some kata sets. So in between kicks and uh, some other things, we're going to work on some kata sets. So um, let's start with one that we worked on last time. So I'm going to be in the left front stance. This is the very end of one soon. Step forward, elbow. My hand is bracing my arm like this. I'm going to turn around and pull my front foot back as I elbow. Defensive front kick. And I step out quite a bit with that kick. That's so when I turn around this way, I have this to pull back as I do the elbow. Kick and land in the front stance. And then finish the top. Again, so we're in the left front stance. Everybody do it with me. Step feet forward and elbow. Turn around with your arms in place. And pull back and elbow behind you. Hit. Switch your hands to the other side. And as you slide your foot back, you elbow with that side. Defensive front kick. Sweep, bridge hand. The bridge hand comes from you sweat when your hands are down here. And the bridge hand comes from down here up. Like that instead of like this. Sweep and your hands are down and then up like you hit from the back of the neck. Alright, Kelly's going to do it once for you. Good. 
We'll do a few on count. Ready? One. Real good. The advanced students, make sure your head's not moving. Like when you do the elbow, don't jerk your head forward. Two. Three. Four. Good. That was good, Ethme. You don't have any power, though. You're just doing the moves like real soft. Do them stronger. And I lost my count. Five. You're strong. Again, set up. Matthew, you're too close to the camera. I can't see you. Much room. I say six. Come on, Madeline, do it. All right, one more time on count. Ready? Do it strong. work. All right, I'm just randomly going to take some different sets from different cows. Um, so we did this one a couple weeks ago. So in Shinto, I strike this way, and then I strike this one. After those long strikes, combination of striking to the collarbone, controlling this outside arm, and then breaking at the elbow. Here, right, control that arm, break. I'm going to do it this way towards the camera. Here. Now when I pull my hands back to my chest, I turn my foot and I'm on the ball of my back foot. So when I do this strike, I'm not really moving my arms like that. It's my hips that I'm pushing forward because I'm pushing off my back leg. So everybody get in that position. You're up on the ball of your back foot. Bend both of your knees. Try to keep your body straight and push your body straight forward. Now to do that, you have to bend your front knee a little. Let's go back to here. Turn. Push off your back leg. Lock. Like a middle block with your hand open. And then we don't have Kelly's arm to hit on this break, so you hit your own arm. That represents the contact that you would make on your elbow. So again, long strike. Here. And as you come back with your hands, set down a little bit by keeping your back knee bent and I'm up on the ball of my foot. Now, if I don't pay attention, especially if I don't bend my front knee, I could end up pushing myself forward that way. What I have to do is push from my hips. So this is not a long movement. I'm only pushing that like that far. So I'm already right up against it. Push. Lock, break. Again, right, double strike, lock, break. I'm going to key. I go all the way through it. Don't try to go as fast as you possibly can go. Just go fluid. Ready? Hup. Again, 
Watch Kelly do it. Good. All right, everybody on count. Take one step back. Same here. Take one step back. No, no. Switch the hands. Go one previous move. There you go. All right. Start there. Hup. Good. All right. Again. There you go, Madonna. Good work. Good work. All right. Everybody do it on your own count. Keep it strong. Go. You're doing good, Madonna. Stop thinking about it now and just do it. Let's see it, ask me. Okay, everybody rest. F me, move up just a little bit. I can't see your head. All right, turn sideways to the camera and do front kicks. No, nope. so kick towards the stairs and whatever is over there. All right, front kicks from front stances. Get in the front stance. There you go. All right. Ethne's going to count us through some. Let's do 15 of them, Ethne. Good recoil. You do this really good. Show them your recoil. Do it. Perfect. All right. You take the count. One. Two. Three. Four. That means you got to count before you move. It'll throw everybody off if you count it while you're kicking. Five. Six. Seven.
Hey, that was good. Um, I can tell from watching, I was switching through everybody, and I can tell from watching some of you are doing it and some of you are not. So what you need to do is emphasize your breathing and time it in with the kick. So if I'm kicking this way, I'm going to inhale when I lift my knee up, and then exhale hard right when I kick. That's where I get that snap. I'm tying my breath in. If I do the kick and I'm thinking about doing the move the right way, it just doesn't have the pop because I'm not uniting my body together. I'm just doing the mechanics of doing the kick. But when I breathe, it ties in the way I'm thinking, the mechanics of how I'm doing the kick, and my whole body. I get that, excuse me, I get that snap on the kick. All right, let's go back to another self-defense set. So in Sayuchin, and I'm not going to get involved in the term. We're going to practice one of the moves. So for some people like uh, Ethne, who's not familiar with this kata, or Madeline, you just follow along do the best you can. So the previous move, I was here, and I was turning and blocking like this. That turn is somebody grabbing my shoulder, my calories back here, and as I turn, I'm going to middle block one of her arms and downward block the other. All right. So like that, and I'm going to turn and block like this. Then the combination is punch into the face with a straight punch. Vertical back fist, groin strike, and she grabbed my arm. And I step back to pull her off balance and then clear her arms off. All right. So I was here on the block. My, no, no. My left foot's full. Left hand in the middle block, right hand in the double block. Now I'm going to punch like that. It's like a fencer with a sword jab. Except I'm doing a straight punch this way. Then vertical back fist. And I'm standing this way because I want you to see that my arm is not moving. But I'm going to turn my body this way. After I turn my body, I swing my arm down here. So watch it again. All right, so that strike down is tied in with my body turning the other way. And here, strike, strike, and as my body turns this way, the strike comes through. Right. I'm going to do it this way. This is the same combination. I'm just going to do it the other way. So punch, vertical back fist. Now watch here. This arm is here, I turn my body, and then strike. That's different than if I move this arm separately, like that. All right, I turn my body, and then strike. All right, coming towards you now. Punch. Vertical back fist. Turn. All right, now this is where Kelly grabbed my arm. So I'm going to step out without turning my body. Then I'm going to turn my body on the clear. Once again, from here. One, two, three. I step out. And as I turn my body, clear. Alright. Go ahead. 
All right, that was pretty good. Kelly didn't let that arm swoop enough. So let's watch her do that again. Go slow. All right, at, at this point, she wants to try to get that hand, this hand, to the far side of her body on that arc. Okay, so watch what I'm saying. So punch, vertical back. Now, I want this edge of my hand to cross over the line on this side of my body. So when I turn, I'm going to make sure that that hand gets all the way to this edge of my body on that turn. If I don't, I end up with like a half turn or a smaller circle. I want it there because I want full motion of that movement because I want to practice as much power as I can in the motion. Remember, we're doing kata, and when you're doing kata, you're trying to do the perfect version of the move. All right, go, go. That's better. All right, that time she let it swoop further to her other side. All right, let's do a few of them on count. One. Good job, Angie. Two. Three. That's me, I just lost your camera. Four. Five. Good job. All right, now let's do some of them on your own count. The move where you step out is the last move of the set. It should be the strongest. So as you go through these moves, you build up power to the last move. All right, on your own. Go. All right, good enough. Rest for a second. We're going to do self-defense now. So I'm going to start by doing four self-defense things. So Madeline and Matthew, F me, pay attention. So I'm standing at ready. Kelly's in front of me in the right front stand. First one, I'm upper blocking. And the second technique, I'm going to go to my right, so I'm going to be in a cap stand. The third technique, I'm going to go to my left, back stand. And the last technique, a fourth stand. Alright, I just did four different techniques, but everybody's familiar with those four stances. So we did this last week. I'm going to time you through it. So everybody come to ready position. 
right, I'm not going to have Kelly punch for you. Everybody's going to practice their self-defense techniques on their own. The first couple times through, I'm going to tell you which stance to go to. All right, I'm ready position. Madeline, you're on top of the camera. Back up so I can see you. F me, you're in the other county. I can't see you. you got to move up a little bit. And Matthew, all I can see is your political sign. I can't see you at all. From ready position. A front stance technique. Ready? Go. Back to ready. Cat stance. Go. Back stance. Go. You should be done quick. This is a block and two strikes, or a block and a kick and a strike, or a block and a strike and a kick. It shouldn't take you too long. Horse stance. Go. All right, starting from the beginning again. Front stance. Go. Every time you do these stances, you can do a different technique. Cat stance. Go. Back stance. Go. Horse stance. Go. Madeline, you're not doing anything. Again. Starting again. Front stance. Go. Cat stance. Go. Back stance. Go. On technique, David. Horse stance. Go. Okay. Now what I'm gonna time everybody. Everybody's doing good. Switching the stances around. Keep trying to do different techniques. Um, give me one minute of those. Ready? Go. Okay, good enough. Brush for that. Now, most systems of karate and taekwondo and kung fu all practice several things the same. They all practice forms of one kind or another. They also practice kicking techniques, but there's variations in the kinds of kicks and how they do their kicks. And then everybody practices self-defense one way or another. But everybody has a different emphasis of why they're doing self-defense techniques. We're doing self-defense techniques to practice aim, to practice precision on the technique, and to practice power. So some schools are practicing precision and aim, but not power. And when they do that, they're practicing, they do, they make contact, light contact. So like if Kelly's punching, 
And I'm doing, I'll show you the technique that we did from Shinto. It goes through that motion. So they can do that motion over and over again. So they're practicing for aim and precision, but not power. Some schools practice for kicking accuracy. So there's a school in Greensboro, when they do self-defense and demonstrations, they run at each other, jump and do a kick. Or they start way back from each other so that they can do a kicking combination, like a round kick to the back. They're not practicing it to be practical, to use it. They're practicing it for different reasons, for accuracy on the kicking. So why did I explain that to you? That's why we have two or three movements, at the most four movements, when we do self-defense. And the reason for that is that Kelly attacks me, and I hit her with something. She's just not going to fall apart. She's going to try to hit me again. So let's say she punches with this hand now, then I'm going to have to do another self-defense technique. If she punches again, then I'm going to have to do another one. And each one of those self-defense techniques are going to be a block <clears throat> and two or three techniques before she retaliates or she falls down. If she falls down, I'm not going to follow up anyway. So that's why our combinations are in two and three, sometimes at the most four. If they're quick hand techniques, you can do like four. Anything more than that, and it just becomes an exercise in doing a whole bunch of techniques, but there's no practical application to it. Because nobody's going to stand still and let you just keep hitting them and hitting them and hitting them. So if you're wondering why we don't have real long, stretched out self-defense techniques, that's why. Because it would, it would like I just showed you, it would be another self-defense combination. All right, on that subject of accuracy, the other thing we worked on was sparring techniques. So a lot of times when I see people practicing their sparring techniques, the techniques are all over the place. Like back fists up here, you know, kicks over to the side, because you're not thinking in your head, where is my opponent? So you should have a pretty good... Uh, ability of this because you do kata. And even if you only know chun Ji, you're practicing visualizing, seeing somebody kicking you, locking them, so there's a person here, and then I'm punching. So when I punch them, I'm aiming to punch them, not up in space somewhere, or some giant way up here like Warner. Warner may be a real person, and he's real tall, but when I practice my karate, I'm not imagining Warner, so I'm not doing this all the time, all right? I envision an opponent my size. If I have to adjust that or F me, if you F me tax me, then I have a lower target. If I have to adjust it for Warner, I back up a step, and I use my kicks. All right, so let's go into a couple hand techniques just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Starting the sparring technique, I'm going to do back this punch. So I'm going to aim with my elbow on the back there so that I know where my hand is going. And then I'm going to reverse punch in an ishin root punch sideways. That's so if my arm gets tapped, it digs that punch up into their body. If I punch with a regular punch and somebody hit it, it would clear it out of the way because my arm doesn't bend like that. But this way it does. So I'm going to back this. I'm going to twist my hips like I do in kata to practice the reverse punch. And then pull it back out. That's the whole combination. So what I'm emphasizing here is aim. Aiming, aiming, start. All right. Let's watch Kelly do that combination. All right, now I'm not going to limit you to your combination. You do what? Sorry about that. That's Kelly's phone. Um, 
You do whatever combination you want, including kicking techniques. I'm going to time you, but let's work on your accuracy. Last time we did this, everybody did really good. Ask me, you're on your feet, right? Fix that camera, you're cutting your head off again. That's better. All right. One minute of sparring techniques. Go. Let me fought her way right out of the room again. All right, rest for a minute. All right, so spine combinations are just like self-defense. If you're all by yourself and you're doing combinations, you can do all kinds of fanatical, all kinds of different combination kicking techniques. But in practical sparring application, you don't have that Thing. For the same reason as self defense, the other person hits back. I remember doing the sports festival in 87. I was coordinator for Taekwondo, and Taekwondo athletes from all over the country came to Raleigh for the sports festival. And before the tournament started, they had lined up and they were picking what we call pork chops, little red targets. And their instructor was holding them, and the classes had lined up. And uh, or the athletes had lined up, and before the tournament started, they were doing all kinds of exotic kicking combinations. Now, part of it was they were warming up and practicing the kicks, but they were going through five and six shot kicking combinations, which don't work. You can't do that against another person that can kick as good as you because they're not going to let you keep kicking them like that, they're going to try to stop you or kick you back. So what ends up happening is you throw more than one combination. You throw a combination, the person retaliates or backs out. Then you throw another combination. Then they throw something at you. You move away from them, counterattack, then you throw another combination. You just don't end up doing 10 and 15 move sparring combinations. So again, it's what is the purpose of the practice? I don't want to stray too far away from the three and four movement practical application when we're doing self-defense or sparring. Because then we'll get in the habit of doing five or six or eight moves, which isn't going to do us any good in actual sparring competition or in, in self-defense. So in my school, we try to stay into those compact three and four move movements. And that Include sparring as well. All right, let's do another minute of that. So set yourself up. Don't forget to switch sides. Sometimes start on your left side and keep your eyes up like you're looking at somebody that you're hitting. All right, one minute, go. Yeah, well, that's why you do it. Just what you just did. All right, everybody stop for a second.
get me back on here. Okay. But Kelly asked me a question as she was doing her technique. She said, is there any time that you can that you go forward or backwards or uh, whichever? So let's review on this last class of 2020. We do katas that are attack kata, that you charge forward. We do katas like solid stance one that are defensive katas, where you're holding your ground and then counter punch. And we do quick forms like Shinto and quick form one, where you're moving really quick and you change direction. The reason we do that is because that's the three kind of warriors. There's attack warriors that duck their head and just go forward attacking. There's defensive fighters that back up and use the other person's mistakes to counter them. And then there's quick fighters that are mobile, they move around on the floor a lot, and they change from offense to defense immediately. So our katas reflect that. Each one of you is one of those types of fighters naturally. That's the way that you approach this. I like to use David Hankins on this, because when David was a kid, he was a football player, and so when he was a brown belt, that was his strategy. Duck his head, go forward. So one of the things that I do when students get close to black belt is I make them expand. He needed to be more than just an aggressive fighter. So I told him he had to work on his defense as well. Kelly falls into that category. She would like to just charge down everybody. But she found out that some people don't get charged down really well. So one of the things you have to do is back off of them. I tend to fight mobile. So I attack people strong, and then I back off of them to get a reaction of them coming back to me. Usually I score when they come back. Every once in a while I'll score because I surprise somebody, or they're not paying attention, and I catch them up with the first couple techniques. But really my strategy is to irritate people, and then back off of them so they come back at me. Because one basic tenant of human nature is if you hit somebody, they want to hit you back, even the littlest kids. So you can use that as part of your strategy in sparring, because you know if you successfully hit somebody, whether you score or not, they're coming back. And when they come back, if you're ready and paying attention and your eyes are up, you've been practicing, paying attention when you're doing your katas, then you don't phase out, look around, you're looking at your opponent, you throw something at them, they come back at you, you counter them when they come back in. So the answer to Kelly's question is sparring is fluid. Sometimes you go forward, sometimes you go backwards. That's why we practice doing different angles on our self-defense. That's why we practice doing aggressive kicks, like side kicks and defensive kicks like a defensive side kick when you're going away. All right. Let's do another minute. Sparring techniques. Ready? Go. Had to be fighting right out of the room again. All right, rest.
Okay, we're going to go back to self-defense. Let's watch Kelly again. She's going to face the camera. So I'm just going to start her off, and she's going to do all four, tech, all four stances, not techniques. All right, go. No, no, no. Do a self-defense technique in each one. So there's her front stance. There's her cat stance. There's her back stance. And her horse stance. All right. So everybody set up. You keep track. Rotate through your stances. Ready? Go. I never got any kind of notification of this, and I didn't see anything on it, but Zoom did expand their 40-minute time limit to 50, or 50-minute 50 time limit to an hour for the holidays. So WebEx must have done the same thing, because I am not getting a notification on it, so we're just going to keep going here and uh, finish up the hour. All right. Um, let me make that announcement again on the weekend. It's supposed to rain on Friday. It's supposed to be warm enough for class on Saturday, but we'll have to wait and see how wet the ground is on Friday. I'll make a, a decision on that Friday night. Saturday, Sunday looks good. Uh, it's not supposed to rain on Saturday, so it should dry out, but it's going to be a little cool. So we'll have to see exactly how cold it is. I'll plan on Sunday's class, and again, Watch the post on the group site to know exactly whether we're going to have class or not. Let me congratulate everybody again. So this group and a few others have been very consistent about coming to class during this COVID break, which none of us expected, of course. And I'm very proud of this group of students who have done really, really well. There's a few others that aren't here tonight until there's a... Uh, Switzerland, actually, and Levi's not in. Sanjay and his family aren't here, but we've had consistent, regular participation. And thanks again, Craig, in Ohio, for uh, being such a great example for everybody, and I'm glad you came to this class tonight, because I got sort of uh, knocked out of that class last time you came in, because my uh, volume was all right, we're going to do side kicks and Sam Hito's back leg hook kick. So Madonna's going to count us through side kicks first. Are we going to do side kick? Yes. Right. Okay. Ready? One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight.
a darle bueno two three four five Power at seven. seven, eight, nine, Marjorie, practice beginning the solid stance one or something while they're doing these kicks. Just do that the first two sets. All right, Sam Hita, you can do back leg hook. Yes. Let's kick with our right leg first. Okay. Let's kick with our right leg first. Got to get behind the head and go a little bit more to your left. Five. There you go. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Switch legs. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Good kick, man. Nine. Okay. Okay, everybody. Great class. So we got through a lot. Um, maybe some things to practice. So I'm looking forward to a new year here. So I know the kids have heard this a million times, but there's never been a year like this one. This has been a, a, a unique year. It's put everybody on hold. So things are starting to look better, I guess. Um, so we'll see what happens. So again, let's go over the class Saturday. If it's not, the ground's not soaked, we'll have class. But again, that class is at 10 o'clock in the morning. So um, we won't have time to dry out. If it rains a lot on Friday, we'll have to cancel Saturday. And then Sunday, we'll have to see how cool it is. So congratulations to everybody on a good work in 2020. I'm proud of this class. Tell his friends to go to class number eight. All right, come to attention. Why do we follow the rules? Thank you. And who's number one? Hi. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Bill. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thanks, Plenty. Thanks, everybody. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, best sensei ever, boss. Thanks. Yeah. Great yeah. work, Marjorie. Happy New Year. Bye, Happy New Year. Thank you, Bill, for finding a way to keep the classes going this year. Oh, uh, well, we're having fun. <laughs> Great working with you guys. All righty. Yeah, I'll see you.
All right, I'm going to shut the meeting off. Thanks again, everybody. Have a good uh, day. See you guys. Let me tell you right back. I got to get some.